Hello, welcome to the Legendary Brown Note. Today, I'll be walking you through my build of the Mini Riser Boss Platform with the Hover Boss Mod. I want to preface this build guide by saying that the most DIY thing I've ever done with speakers is putting banana plugs on speaker wire. What I'm basically saying is please forgive any noob mistakes that you see, but the bottom line is I got it to work and it is amazing. Before getting into the build guide, I just want to say a little bit about why I built the platform. Feel free to jump ahead to the build if you're looking for that. Timestamps in the description below. I have two capable subs in the Rhythmic FV25HPs that have good SPL output and are rated down to 12 Hz. The problem is that in my room, the frequency response drops off very quickly around 15 Hz and bass EQ content goes well into the single digits. When we're talking about sub 20 Hz bass content, we're really talking about bass you can feel. The idea behind the Boss platform is it's designed to give you tons of tactile response. And a lot of that 20 Hz and below content is all tactile. If you've heard of bass shakers or motion actuators, the idea is similar in that it transfers vibrations through objects like your couch and into your body. Can you achieve this with just subwoofers? Yeah, probably. There are some crazies on AVS who have tons of subwoofers all over the rooms to achieve this. Those people are my idols. However, to get a similar effect, I decided to build a platform because it's cheaper and it doesn't take up as much space. You can read all about it on several threads over on the AVS forums. I'll put links in the description below. If you're looking for the theory behind tactile response, check out the tactile response thread for bass. If you want to see the crazy boss platform variations, you should check out the hideaway theater thread. And if you've built a boss platform or equivalent, you should definitely check out the base EQ thread. Okay, a couple of quick shout outs before we begin the guide. Members Calling Mr. Benzo and Aaron 7 Wall from AVS helped me so much through this process. I was able to chat with them and they helped walk me through a lot of the post build setup and calibration. They were even able to help me fix my frequency response and it's now the flattest it's ever been. They're super nice people and you'll definitely run into them on AVS. Thanks guys, I owe you one. The second person I wanna thank is Gilemanie, I, I don't know, some AVS member who took a lot of time to compile an awesome written guide, which I pretty much followed to a T in making my mini riser. Thanks for helping a noob out. I'll link his guide down below as well and all the parts that I bought for this project. Finally, user Scott Simonia helped me through the wiring of the drivers in the boss, as well as understanding wiring in general. Thanks for hand holding a noob through this process. I must have tested your patience. All right, let's get on with the build. Step one was acquiring a piece of plywood that was large enough to go under my couch. The guides recommend Baltic birch for this purpose, and I went with this option at Home Depot. It's definitely not the nicest piece of Baltic birch, but it was close by and available. I went with a three quarter inch four by eight piece, and I really should have taken a video of trying to get the sucker into my van. I should have brought someone to help me but after 10 minutes of mucking about, I was able to get it in, get it home. I then employed the help of my neighbor, Sam, who is starting to dip his toes into woodworking. Big thanks to you, my friend, for helping me with all the cutting and drooling. The first step was to cut the entire board down to size. My couch measures about seven and a half feet wide and three and a quarter feet deep. Two simple cuts later, we were ready to start measuring the holes for the drivers. I decided to go with four drivers instead of the three listed in the guide because of two reasons. One was wiring in series slash parallel, which makes it a four ohm load to my amp. The second was I saw a picture of something similar on AVS and I thought, hey, that looks cool, let's do it. You can tell I didn't really plan all that well. So the drilling of the holes commenced. Sam first started with a router to try to get the holes nice and neat. We started a bit smaller than the actual driver to make sure that we didn't take off too much wood. We soon realized that the router blade didn't really cut all the way through the three quarter inch plywood. So Sam took a jigsaw, went to town. A little note here about the cleanliness of the holes. You don't have to make them perfect because no one's gonna see them. The drivers just have to drop in, but Sam being the perfectionist that he is, tried very hard to make it look nice. At this point, you can paint or stain the wood, but I was lazy and I didn't want to. I think the wood looks nice as is. The next step was to mount the drivers into the holes and then screw them in. Once we had the drivers in, it was time to work on the wiring. I went with a series slash parallel configuration so I can keep the four ohm speakers as a four ohm load to the amp. Let's take a look at this janky picture. 
I took the negative from driver 1 and hooked it up to the positive on driver 2. I then did the same thing with drivers 3 and 4. This is what they mean by wiring in series and is represented by the red lines in the picture. I then took the positives from driver 1 and 3, twisted them together, and then put them in the 1 plus terminal of the speak on terminal. This is the brownish orange line. Finally, I took the negatives from driver 2 and 4, twisted the wire together, and put it on the 1 minus terminal on the speak on terminal. This is the green line in the picture. The brown and green lines represent the parallel part of the wiring. The JBL GX1200 takes spade connectors for the drivers, and I bought the crimp on kit in the guide that has the multiple sizes needed for this project. You will need the female ends and crimp them to your speaker wire. This part was a bit dodgy with the kit that I bought, so if you want to make a more solid connection, you might want to solder your connections. I used the crimp connectors and then wrapped it up with electrical tape because again, I'm lazy. I know that's going to trigger some folks, sorry. I use 16 gauge wire for this project because my runs are not all that long. Speak on connectors are much more solid than your run of the mill banana plugs and it was nice to work with this type of connector. All right, so let's talk about the Nutrik Speak On cable. I really like them, and here's how I made them. So first, you grab your length of uh, wire that you need. Uh, I made about 25 foot for my 16 gauge. I think that's the, the highest uh, or the longest run that you should make with 16 gauge. And um, I'm gonna strip the wire. It's always nice to have uh, some wire strippers around. You can do this many ways, but this is probably one of the easiest ways so I like to uh, take off about that much uh, on the on the wire jacket. All right, then we do the same for the other side. Uh, this one took off a little bit more than I wanted to, but that's okay. Now we take our uh, speak on connector, we open it up, and uh, a couple of parts. So the first thing you want to do is take the end connector, and you want to actually slip it onto the wire first, so that you don't forget about it later on. So I'm gonna do that. There's gonna be two different size strain reliefs. Um, and uh, for 16 gauge, we're gonna use the smaller of the two, which is the white one. And uh, we're just gonna slip that on. If you forget to slip it on now, you, there's a little opening right here that you can slip it onto the cable afterwards, but I'm gonna slip it on now. So the actual connector, we have four terminals here. And uh, we have a one positive, one negative, and a two positive, two negative. For our purposes, we're going to use the one positive, one negative. So I like to use the black wire for my negative and the clear wire for my positive. And um, once you are identified um, which one is the positive and negative, then you kind of slip it into the corresponding hole. So for me, this is, um, so this is my one positive and this is my one negative. So here's the clear one. I'm gonna start with the clear one first. That's gonna go into the positive. Right, if you can see, I'm just gonna slip it into the hole. And now I'm gonna take a Phillips screwdriver and I'm just going to tighten down this little bit right here. And usually um, you give it a nice little tug. If it doesn't come out, then you're good to go. All right, now I'm gonna put the black cable into the one negative. Make sure I braid it. You can cut off the little excess if you have too much. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you guys uh, what I'm gonna do. So yeah, obviously I have too much uh, exposed, um, but you can kind of trim off the excess. All right, and then you can screw it in this side until you give it a nice little tug. Like again, I would uh, trim off a lot of that extra Thing. I'm just using this as a demonstration. Um, and now comes the strain relief. You'll notice that uh, there are certain grooves on it. Um, there are certain grooves on it that line up with this part of the connector. So it kind of only fits one way. Then you slide the other connecting piece on top. So the threads going down. All right, so now that we have uh, this part of it on, we're almost done. We're just gonna bring the end cap on and this is a ratcheting system. So you're gonna hear it click and uh, you just kinda go, keep turning it until uh, it's tight. And that's it, that's how you make your speak on cable. 
and uh, you do it on the other side and you're good to go. We then finished off the platform by putting on rubber motion isolators. Its purpose is to decouple the platform from the floor and allow it to move. It comes with double-sided tape and I placed them roughly two feet apart from each other. The next thing I did was the Hover Boss mod. I bought some of these Maxxis fat tubes and attached them to the bottom of the platform. This is to help seal the drivers off and it increases the amount of shaker force to the platform. This also allows you to increase the 80 watt recommendation to each driver as well. Basically, it makes everything about the boss platform even more awesome. I filled these up with air and let the air back out until I couldn't hear air escaping. You should be able to pinch the tire easily and when you rest both arms on each side, it should still be able to support them. I then used double-sided tape to attach the tubes to the platform. A quick note here, I wasn't planning on doing the Hover Boss mod initially, so my middle two drivers were spaced just a bit too far apart for one tire to fit around them, but I stretched it out a little, made it work. If you are planning to follow this design, I suggest you move the two drivers closer together so that you can cover both drivers with one tube more easily. At this point, there's one more thing you can do that I haven't tried yet. Apparently, air can still escape the tubes even after you place weight on the platform. Some AVS members have suggested you seal off the tubes, and one way is to buy some painter's plastic and seal things off, like you see here. Once I had the Hover Boss mod in place, I put the platform down and then put the couch on top of it. I connected the platform to my Behringer NX3000 with my speak on cable I just made. A side note about the amp. The Behringer amps are very loud. If you are not gonna have your amp in a separate room or very, very far away, you will hear them. Take a look at this video I made doing a fan mod to make the amp much more quiet. The amp then gets connected via an XLR to RCA cable to the mini DSP and that's it. Quick tip if you're using a similar signal chain, you want to have the input knob on the NX3000 all the way up and lower the gain on the mini DSP. You should also try to have your sub trim on your AVR in the negative 10 to negative 11 range for extra headroom so you can avoid clipping. Without the Hover Boss mod, you may want to limit the amount of wattage each driver gets to about 80 watts. With the mod, these drivers can take much more power. I put a PEQ low shell filter at 10 hertz at 4.4 dB and a Q of 0.5 on the mini DSP to make the response plus or minus 0.4 dB down to 4 hertz. I then went to the crossover tab on the mini DSP and put a low pass filter at 10 hertz and the filter type of BW 12 dB per octave. I'm still playing around with the filter type and it's a season to taste kind of thing. Once I had everything set up and built, it was time to try it out. I immediately tried the Edge of Tomorrow intro. This got really violent. Here's the vibe sensor power spectrum graph, and that gives you an idea of how much power you get at certain frequencies with the BOSS platform. I hope you found this guide useful. Please let me know if I've made any mistakes in the comments below. If you have any questions, you can always ask me or you can hit up the AVS forum threads for more help. The BOSS platform is always undergoing changes and improvements, and I only built the very basic mini riser variant. There are other configurations if you have different types of seating as well. Thanks to all the forum members that have helped me through this journey. See you guys soon, and thanks for watching.